Hey everybody, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. Today I thought we would take a look at a method for drawing this part. And where did I get this part? I got this part from a video that I saw on Gary Ramsey's YouTube channel. I'll link to that video so you guys can go ahead and watch it too. And when I watched this video, I saw the method that Gary used to draw it and I thought it was a great example to show how sometimes it's easier to draw this in a couple more steps rather than trying to draw the entire thing in one sketch and do a bunch of trimming. So I thought we'd take a look at a different alternative way compared to how Gary went and drew this uh, for this video. If you haven't seen Gary's videos before, you should go over there and check his channel out. He does some pretty amazing fabrication work and I really wish I had one tenth of the skill that he has when it comes to making fabrication parts. This part is a actual part that he received from one of his customers that he was asked to make on his new fiber laser uh, that he can use to cut metal like this. So let's jump in and see how I might go about modeling this part. I'm in Fusion now, and uh, I'm not gonna save this part, and I'm not gonna make a component or anything like that. Obviously, you should do that. Um, whether you want to make a component or not depends on uh, if you think you're gonna add more files, you know, more components to your design. If you know this is the only thing you're gonna draw, then you can go ahead and just start uh, modeling your part. But if you think you might add other things into your design, then you might want to break it into a couple components instead. So for me, I'm just gonna go ahead and start sketching this since that's the intent of this video is to show the method for drawing this. So I'm gonna start off by creating a sketch. You can choose any plane you want. I'm gonna put it on my front plane. And then I'm gonna draw a circle based on the uh, origin point, And I'm gonna give this a diameter of 0.5. I'm gonna come back and draw a second circle. And this is going to be the OD of the part, or the major OD of the part, and so this is going to be 3.5 inches. And that's all I'm going to do for my first feature on this part, is I'm just going to use those two uh, circles that I drew. I'm going to extrude those out a quarter of an inch. That's the thickness of the finished part needs to be. So there's my first um, feature that I'm going to do. Now I'm going to work on creating the little half moon that goes the, around the outside of the part. So we're going to create a sketch on the front face. And then I'm gonna sketch a circle. But uh, before I go ahead and do that, I want this to be a construction circle. So I'm just gonna to toggle the construction on and I'm gonna go back to the origin. I'm gonna drag this out and the diameter of this is going to be three. Now I'm ready to draw another circle, but I don't want that to be construction anymore. So I'm gonna uncheck construction. And I'll go back and grab my circle command. And here's another common thing I see uh, newer users do is they want to pick this point exactly where the construction circle and the green line meet. And as you can see, Fusion will not automatically select that. So rather than putting exactly where the circle, where you think it needs to go, I recommend you drag it off to the side a little bit while remaining coincident to the construction circle. So I'm just gonna go to the left side of this green line a little bit and click my point there. I'm gonna drag out and this diameter is gonna be 1.375. And there's my circle diameter, but it's not in the right place. So to get it exactly where I want it to go, I'm going to use the horizontal vertical constraint to add a vertical constraint between the origin and the center point of the circle. And there you see the circle turns black and is fully constrained, so I know it's exactly where I want it to go. And now I'm going to go ahead and finish my sketch. I'm going to go to a home view, and I'm going to extrude the top half moon. And I like to go for this to an object, and I'm going to choose this back face and I'll hit OK. Now if I ever go and change the original thickness of the extrusion, that feature that I just created will automatically extend to the new face and I won't have to go back and adjust it. At this point I could pattern this around four times, but since I'm gonna have a cutout that has four, uh, a pattern of four, I might as well do both of those at the same time. So let's go work on making the cutout now. So I'm gonna create a sketch on the front face and I'm gonna draw a circle with a diameter of one, and I'm gonna draw another circle with a diameter of three. Now I'm gonna drop a couple points in here that will keep me from having to use any dimensions. So I'm gonna choose a point, and I'm gonna put it right about there, and I'll put one point right about there. Now, neither of those points are exactly where I want them to be, so again, I'm gonna use the horizontal vertical constraint to add a vertical constraint between those two points, and a horizontal constraint between those two points. So now I've got those points uh, exactly where I want them, and I'm gonna use those to my advantage in a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the line command, and I don't need to be too careful about this. I just wanna click somewhere on the circle and end somewhere on the other circle, and I repeat that same process right here. 
click somewhere on this circle and end somewhere on the other circle. Now those two lines aren't where I need them to be, but I'm gonna use the horizontal vertical constraint again and those two points that I drew in to get them where I want them to be. So let's go ahead and add a horizontal constraint between this point and that point and a vertical constraint between this point and that point. So now we know that we wanted these lines to be a half of an inch uh, in, in total thickness or a quarter of an inch away. And because I put the points in the quadrants like that, I can just line those up and they're already preset without having to go back and add dimensions. The other thing with this is if I were to change the diameter of the center circle, these points would automatically adjust, forcing the position of these two lines to adjust as well. So saving myself a little design intent work down the future as I make choices or different design uh, edits. Let's go ahead and finish the sketch. And I'm going to go back to my home view. And now I want to go ahead and extrude this section. I'm going to drag this arrow all the way through. I'm going to drag it in the direction I want. But rather than saying a distance here, I know my intent is for this to always be cut all the way through. So I'm going to set my extents to all, and then I'll hit OK. And now I am ready to pattern this and finish this part up. So from the Create menu, I'm going to choose a, cir a pattern, a circular pattern. And instead of faces in this case, which would require me to click on all the faces I want to pattern, I'm going to go ahead and choose features. We can select the features on the model, or we can grab them in the timeline. And for this one, I think it might be easier for me to grab them from the timeline. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that feature, and I'm going to choose that feature. So I want to grab these two features. Now Fusion says I have two selected. And for my axis, I can choose this green axis. I could choose the edge of this hole or the face. My preference would probably be the face. I think this is going to be the most stable feature to choose from, and it's probably one of the easiest for me to grab on my model. So I'll just go ahead and click on that and tell Fusion how many it is I want to end up with. So I'm going to say I want four in total when I'm done, and I'll go ahead and hit OK, and there is our finished part. So the way we drew this is it's pretty editable for future uh, design changes. And we also didn't have to trim anything in the entire design, so we just made simple prismatic shapes the whole thing to get our uh, the whole way through to get our finished part. The last step that Gary may want to do is he has to get this part out to his laser cutter so he can go ahead and cut it. And so I might create a new sketch on the front face. And once I choose that front face, I'm gonna choose finish sketch. Go back to my home view if I want. Um, now I have the sketch, I'm gonna right click on it and say save as DXF. And so I'll just save this as a valve knob and I'll save it right to my downloads folder. I have AutoCAD running, so let me just switch over to AutoCAD and let's take a look at what this looks like inside of AutoCAD. So we'll just jump over here to AutoCAD and I'll hit open, browse to my downloads folder. There's that valve knob DXF and we're gonna go ahead and hit open. And now when we look, uh, Fusion uh, transferred that file exactly where it was in space compared to where it was located in Fusion. And we also see that all the lines come across as polylines. Some machines handle this well, some machines don't handle this well. If you need to deal with this a little bit, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit X on my keyboard for explode, uh, or you can choose it from the menu and I'm just gonna drag a window, window around everything and hit enter. And now I've broken this into its individual parts, arcs, lines, and circles. Um, if you have a machine that doesn't handle polylines well. So hopefully that gives you a little look at how we can uh, take a part like this and break it down to some simple uh, steps to come up with a easy to create part that's pretty editable for future design changes. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And uh, if you like the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. And uh, any comments you'd like to leave, I'd love to read. So thanks for taking the time to watch this video.